Back in 2014, I actually won a Galaxy Gear Live from Android Central. And if it wasn't for that moment, I don't think I'd be making this video today. I've always been into tech. I love phones. I love getting the latest phones, all the new features. Uh, but when smartwatches came out, I wasn't so convinced. I didn't think I would want that. I didn't think they were necessary. Before that, I never wore watches. I don't know anything about traditional watches. I don't really care about them. But I became addicted to this little watch. I wore it all the time, no matter what I was doing. So fast forward a few years, the charger on that watch had broken, which it was kind of famous for. And I was struggling to stick it on the charger every night. The battery life was getting bad. The screen was a tiny bit burnt in. Uh, and I was ready to move on. So fast forward a few years, I've tried out a bunch of different smartwatches, but I'm currently on my third long-term smartwatch, the Galaxy Watch Active 2, and I really love it. Before this, I was on the Gear S3 Frontier, and I used that watch for over three years. I really didn't have any issues with it, but near the end there, it was getting a little laggy, battery was starting to suffer, but it turns out that it just needed a reset. So I did that reset, and things actually got pretty close to back to normal. But because of that temporary negative experience, I already had my eye on the Galaxy Watch Active 2 seeing really good used deals, uh, I got kind of hooked and I couldn't resist. I ended up seeing the Galaxy Watch Active 2 Golf Edition on Woot.com, if you're not familiar, it's just a daily deal site, for $200. I thought that was a great deal, especially because when I looked up the Gear S3 Frontier on eBay, it was going for $100. So I could essentially have the new Galaxy Watch Active 2 for 100 bucks if I sold my old watch. So I figured today I will talk to you about my experience with the S3 Frontier over the past three years, my experience now with the Watch Active 2, I've been using it for two or three months now. So whether you're deciding to upgrade from the Gear 3 Frontier or another smartwatch to the Watch Active 2, or you're looking for a smartwatch to buy today, I'm gonna help you decide which one you should get because they're both still really viable. Thanks for watching, my name is Chris. If you enjoy this video, please hit like and get subscribed. So going over these watches today, we're not gonna talk specs too much. I can put the specs down in the description, but I don't think they really matter. Uh, what matters on these watches is how do they perform? Do they live long enough for me to use them for a day or two without worrying about them dying on me? Are they buggy? Are they comfortable? Do they look good? Stuff like that. So we'll start out with the biggest difference, that rotating bezel that everybody loves. The Watch Active 2 does mimic this on the touchscreen, but I gotta say, there is nothing like the Gear S3 Frontier. That rotating physical dial on the watch is unbeatable. You almost never have to touch the watch face. If you do have to touch the watch face, just little taps here and there, you can avoid getting smudges on it. There's no swiping, leaving big marks on your watch. Using that dial is just the best to wake up the watch, to check notifications, you can read stuff. You can use the button to go back. You can double tap to talk to the voice assistant, which we'll talk about. And then when you look at the Watch Active 2, it doesn't have that rotating bezel, but that does help make it sleeker and gives it a different design. Of course, if you like that, whichever design you prefer is up to you. And yes, you can kind of rotate on the outside, uh, but I found in my experience over the past couple of months, it doesn't work that well. Uh, when you get it, and you're rotating, it works fine, it'll keep rotating, but kind of getting it started, I think it's trying to reject accidental touches. So if you do a very small or slow swipe around the bezel, it doesn't seem to do anything. It doesn't seem to react to that. And it can be really annoying when you're trying to make fine movements, and then when it finally catches on to what you're doing, it'll make a big jump or go too many, and then you try to go back, and it can just kind of be a mess versus that physical dial. Never, never an issue. It'll never, ever mess up on you. So battery life, probably the other most important thing about these watches, is excellent. Even after three years on the S3 Frontier, easily making it through a day. I take my watch off the charger somewhere around 7.30 a.m. It goes back on the charger anywhere between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. And it has never not lasted that day for me. Uh, when I first got it, if I remember correctly, it was ending those days around maybe 60% or so. These days after three years, it ends the day between 20 and 30%. Uh, so the battery's worse but it doesn't really matter. It still lasts a full day. I pretty much never wore the S3 Frontier while sleeping just because it was so big. Um, when I first got it, I did, you know, for the sleep tracking and the sleep tracking does work really well, but the thing is so uncomfortable to wear and then the physical bezel can, can get rotated while you're sleeping and laying there and moving around. Um, so it would wake the watch up and then you got this bright light in your face. But the S3 Frontier is not that comfortable to wear while sleeping. If you really want sleep tracking, the Galaxy Watch Active 2 is what you're gonna want for sleep tracking. It is much lighter, it's much thinner. I've used it a ton while sleeping and I don't notice. And that rolls back into battery life. The Watch Active 2, it is brand new. Uh, I got it from Woot brand new, it was not refurbished. If I take that one off the charger about 7.30 a.m. or so, it'll get back on the charger between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. 
with 70% uh, battery life, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little less. Uh, that's also really dependent on how many notifications you're getting and the way you use your watch. So the way I use my watches is I have the always on display on. So the display is always on on my watches, but I have the lift to wake deactivated. I really don't like that, even on the newest watches. I find it's too sensitive. When I'm moving my hands around, it'll wake up and kind of distract me and get brighter and darker and all this stuff. So I just prefer to be able to glance at it to check the date and the time really quickly and then put it back down. If I want to interact with it, I can either tap the screen, tap a button on the side. And this is another negative for the Watch Active 2. With the S3 Frontier, you could rotate the bezel and it wakes up every time. But with the Watch Active 2, you're supposed to be able to tap it and it'll wake up, but it doesn't always do that. And then I was kind of thinking maybe a double tap to wake is what you were supposed to do. But even that, it doesn't always respond. Um, I would say, you know, maybe 70 or 80% of the time it's responding to those taps. But 20 or 30% of the time, me tapping on the watch and it doing nothing can get kind of old. So I've resorted to more now tapping the back button on the top right of the watch to wake it up and then interacting with it that way. So going back into comfort, the Gear S3, again, is a lot bigger than the Galaxy Watch Active 2 and a lot heavier. When I had the S3 initially, it was pretty big and, and a little hard to wear, but I got used to it really quick and I never had a problem with it. All of my smartwatches, I wear them all day, every day. I wake up in the morning, get ready for work, put it on before I leave, and it doesn't come off until I go to bed. Despite that, I never had a problem with the S3 Frontier. Its size didn't bother me after I got used to it, but man, switching to the Watch Active 2, it is so much lighter, so much sleeker, so much more comfortable. I didn't realize, I didn't realize how big and bulky and kind of in the way the S3 was, uh, but it is, it's pretty big. And again, if that's the only thing you get and you're used to it, then you probably won't mind. I don't have the biggest of wrists um, and it was fine for me, but I much, much prefer the Watch Active 2. I have the 44 millimeter version. There is an even smaller version. So next up is styling. I don't want to talk too much about this because it's so personal. Uh, I don't really care. <laughs> I want a functional watch that works well um, and tells me the time and doesn't lag and has good battery life and stuff like that. So the Frontier is a little more bulky, uh, looks a little nicer. Uh, may go better with a uh, suit or something. Whereas the Watch Active 2, of course, from the name you can tell it's like an active watch, like a sports watch. I wear it to work every day. I wear a button-up shirt. It looks fine. The Golf Edition came with this special strap and I really like it. That's the style I enjoy. The strap is really comfortable. Um, I think the stock one, that's not the Golf Edition, the strap isn't as comfortable, I've heard, but I have no experience with it. Of course, you can change out the watch bands on these to whatever you want. There's tons of options on Amazon. Try to avoid the cheap ones. When I first got into these watches, I was getting just like the cheapest watch bands I could. They break, they're not comfortable. Uh, just don't waste your time and don't waste your money. So let's talk about the software. Another really important part of these watches. It's almost identical. The S3 Frontier, even to this day, is still getting software updates. A lot of the features on the S3 Frontier are the same as the Watch Active 2. You do now have Bixby on the S3 Frontier instead of S-Voice, which was total garbage. I never ever used S-Voice. It just, it didn't work. It didn't understand me. Uh, it didn't do what I asked because it didn't understand me. So I never used it. Like that is not an exaggeration. I never used it, which was a disappointment because you know, voice is really nice. Now with the Watch Active 2, Bixby works really well. And for a few weeks there, I was using it daily, multiple times a day. It's really useful for me at work to use the timer function and the reminder function. Um, and I was using that multiple times a day. But lately I've been getting an error where I try to use the watch and it just says error. So I can show you an example of that error. Here's my watch, you're supposed to double tap this button for Bixby, and when I double tap it, it just says error. An error occurred, please try again. And everything's updated, I don't know. I can't get it to work anymore, so I guess I'm just cursed with smartwatches and their voice functionality because it's not working for me. Um, I may do a factory reset, I haven't done that yet, but I just got everything set up and I like the way it is, so I don't wanna do that. Uh, but that's been really annoying. Here's an example of S-Voice on the S3 Frontier. You can do the same thing, double click this button. Set a timer for five minutes. So it just vibrated and now it's thinking and thinking and thinking and it will do this for a very long time which we're not going to wait for. Also in terms of software, the cool thing is these watches should work with any modern smartphone. Of course double check that your exact phone is compatible, but they work with Android, they work with iOS, and they should work really well with any other phone. You can download Samsung's app, you sync the watches, you should have all your functionality or most of it. As for some of the health and fitness features, heart rate monitors work great on both. I double checked them with a chest strap. Well I did with the S3 Frontier and I found that it was incredibly accurate. I assume the same for the Watch Active 2. The Watch Active 2 will eventually in the US 
get you blood pressure monitor and EKG, but neither of those are approved by the FDA yet. Samsung did just release the blood pressure part of that in South Korea, um, so hopefully that's coming to the US soon, but you will not get those features on the S3 Frontier. Uh, as of today, you don't have them on either watch, but they should be coming to the Watch Active 2 soon. I think it was supposed to be this quarter, uh, second quarter of 2020, but I haven't heard any updates on that. Pedometer works great, not much to talk about. That's pretty much every smartwatch now is good at that. I mentioned before, sleep tracking works really well. Um, I was using it almost every day for a few weeks there, and now I've just, you know, I don't really do it anymore because it's comfortable and everything, but it's like, I slept. I mean, yep, I was asleep. The data's a little bit varied every night, but I, I know if I slept well or not. And it's interesting to see it first when you first get the watch if you haven't used those sleep apps. But unless you have a specific need that you know about for yourself, that you would need that sleep tracking, uh, for most people, it's interesting, like I said, but it's not really necessary. And then they both have automatic workout detection where if you go for a walk or a run or something, the watch will just automatically pick that up for you. On my S3 Frontier, I had disabled this pretty early on because I found it annoying and it was always activating when I wasn't really needing it to, like in the car and stuff like that. I haven't disabled it on the Watch Active 2 yet. It's worked well for some walks I've went on a couple of miles and it'll pick it up and, and be very accurate in that way. But it also, I found a couple times while I, I have a riding lawnmower and while mowing the lawn, it picks that up as a workout and it doesn't label it as biking or anything like that. It just says a generic workout. So it's not the most accurate. I think you're still better off if you're going to work out and you want to track it. Just go over, swipe over to that little app. You can have the quick shortcuts, click the workout you're doing, and then turn it off when you're done. And then finally, I'll talk about calls and notifications. Uh, both watches, you can take calls. I use the Bluetooth versions of the watches. But even on those, if it's connected to your phone, you get a phone call, get the notification on your watch. On the S3 Frontier, you can use the dial. On the Watch Active 2, you can swipe left or right to pick up or or hang up on the call um, and you can talk right through the watch and it works great I don't use it that often but when I do it's usually because I'm busy and I'll use a knuckle because my hands are dirty or something and kind of swipe over answer that call um, you can't be too active because the watches aren't all that loud but if you just kind of stop for a second take your call make it quick um, it works really well. Texting, uh, all those other apps are great. One of the features I really like is when you get a notification, you can go over to that notification, go to more, and you can actually say, don't give me notifications on the watch for this app anymore. And I love that if you play mobile games on your phone, you know they're always spamming you. Uh, some of them you may want to keep the notifications on though, but maybe not on your watch. So you can just turn it off for specific apps. So I'm really select in what apps can actually send a notification to my watch. And then on my phone, uh, it's been silenced since 2014. Uh, ever since I started with that Gear Live, I've had my phone on silent, no vibrate, nothing. I get all my notifications through my watch, sound is off, watch vibrates, that's it. So overall, which of these two smartwatches is better for you? Of course, that's a very personal decision, uh, but I am really enjoying the Watch Active 2. I think it's a great upgrade, but at the same time, if you like the style of the S3 Frontier better and you don't want blood pressure and EKG, uh, and maybe you know giving up on updates a little sooner, although it is still getting updates, I think that's also a great choice. It's a cool looking watch, it's a tank, it works really well, and oh man, do I miss that rotating bezel. Um, but overall, I'm happy with the Watch Active 2. I like that it's lighter, thinner, better life's better, only as a consequence of being a newer watch. But even if you pick up the Frontier today, you'll have more than enough battery life to make it through a day. And if you take it off at night and just set it on that wireless charger, it'll be ready for you in the morning. I'm sure there are other things I did not cover in this video because these things are so complicated and so complex. But if you have any questions, leave them below. I love talking to you down in the comments. I'll leave links to the watches below if you want to check them out on Amazon. Also, make sure you pay attention to Woot. I've seen the Watch Active 2 on there a few times. I've seen the Golf Edition and the Normal Edition for 200 bucks, brand new, the 44 millimeter. I hope you enjoyed this one. I look forward to talking to you down in the comments and you will see me in the next video.